What's going on everybody? Satsuki Azaleas and the concept of design. I'm really, really, really excited for this stream because, you know, we talk about Satsuki Azalea uh, repotting and Peter Warren gave us a tremendous breakdown. You know, the advancement of the soil concept for Satsuki Azalea Kanuma with pumice, the handling of uh, Kanuma appropriately, washing of the trunk, management of the sheen, your aftercare and watering, phenomenal foundational knowledge for Satsuki Azalea repotting. And Peter did a little bit on pruning as well when we were looking at, at that initial flower tower um, style of tree. But diving into how do we design Satsuki Azaleas? How do we take them out of you know, a relatively, what I would consider to be mundane potential sort of shape and style and design, and how do we push them forward? Because there is really, when we talk about Satsuki Azalea, a significant limitation in our capacity to alter them in the same way that we handle other broadleaf evergreen trees, right? And when we say, oh my gosh, Satsuki Azalea, broadleaf evergreen, that's right. It is a broadleaf that doesn't lose its leaves like a deciduous does. And inside of that, we need to look at that. And we say, okay, well, what else are broadleaf evergreen trees? Eliagnus is a broadleaf evergreen tree. Um, uh, Gardenia is a broadleaf evergreen tree. Pieris is a broadleaf evergreen tree. Olive is a broadleaf evergreen tree. Every tropical that we work with is a broadleaf evergreen tree. And, and so all of a sudden, inside of broadleaf evergreen trees, we recognize, wow, there's a lot of behavior. Olive is handled entirely different than Ellie Agnes is high, handled entirely different than Camellia is handled entirely different than Satsuki Azalea, okay? And so when we start to look at Satsuki Azalea, one of the biggest limitations to Satsuki Azaleas is we cannot cut off big, thick, heavy branches because once they become a bonsai subject, they come out of the growing field. Huge, vigorous, strong surging system. Big branches are cut, fully removed if necessary. Big roots are cut. The sheen of the tree is bare rooted, washed, and the entire system is completely started from scratch. That is the beginning of a Satsuki Azalea out of the field as a bonsai subject, and in order to have this kind of beefy trunk on a satsuki, which is a shrub, right, a basally dominant shrub, you would have to have the impact and the growth rate of the field to encourage this kind of size, girth, and, and, and trunk style, okay? So coming out, the initial handling of satsuki azalea is really when the big branch reduction occurs. Now, can we reduce branches over the course of time? Absolutely, very, very slowly. It might take two or three years to remove one of these structural branches that exist. When we look in here and we talk about the girth of these pieces, go ahead and bring me in tight there, Josh. Okay, we talk about the girth of these pieces. It might take me two or three years of reducing the foyer mass on this and redirecting the water transport lines around that branch to be able to move that branch and avoid the trunk dying back and potentially even some of the nabari dying back as a result of that branch removal. And so we start to look at Satsuki Azalea from the perspective of working with what you have and now playing with length. And this is really where we start to step into Satsuki Azalea design on a mature specimen such as this, playing with length to start to change that very bare minimum asymmetrical kind of existence. And notice here, same length here, maybe slightly longer there, centered apex certainly over the base as well as centered in the asymmetry of the design, and it's not interesting. It's beautiful when it flowers, awesome. Can Satsuki, Satsuki Azalea have more? Absolutely. I mean, look at the nabari, look at the trunk, look at the branching. This is a beautiful piece of material here. This has tremendous potential, and it all comes down to really driving that asymmetry, playing on length, opening up depth and negative space, and pruning sustainably so that we're able to reduce the Satsuki Azalea over time. Now, before I get started, I want to dive into one more consideration of Satsuki Azalea. And that is, when do we do this type of pruning? Now, spring is always a great time for Satsuki Azalea. Stored sugars and starches are in abundance, okay? But when we start talking at this point in time of the style of pruning, right? Pruning earlier in the spring season, is going to, especially with big heavy prunes or cutback of thicker branches, is going to elicit a few very strong shoots to emerge. These are secondary scaffolding or pieces that could take over as primary branching, right? We wait until kind of the mid-spring. And if you just look, and Lonnie, if you wanna come in here, 
I'll show you. We have new buds just starting to push. This is the new soft leaf mass right here, pushing from the base of this shoot. And what we see, almost like a black pine with a multitude of candles. Satsuki azaleas produce three or sometimes even four. And if you look at this branching junction right here, I've got one, I've got two, I've got three, I've got four. When I look at what's pushing here, I've got one, two, three, and four shoots pushing here. That's a big part of informing the pruning process, right? Because as those pieces are just starting to become active, it's a beautiful time, beautiful time, if we are not gonna let this tree flower to come in and thin our fours and threes down to two at every junction, which we're gonna have to do across the entirety of this tree in terms of pruning just to create sustainable branch shape. We will do that after we make structural cutbacks, okay? So we're gonna come down and we're gonna thin those threes and fours down to twos for sustainable ramification. And then we're gonna potentially even cut back some of the growing tips. Now we're sacrificing flower buds again, and so this takes us to our third moment in the spring or early summer that we can look at pruning a Satsuki azalea. Right after flowering, taking off that stamen, right, the interior portion of the flower, along with the seed pod, because we never want to let Satsuki azalea, we can let them flower, we don't want to let them go to seed. That is a major energy drain that sucks the life out of that branch. Boom, we remove that stuff, or we come in and we prune. Again, cutting back to the desired length, reinvigorating branch tips, stimulating those new fleshy water conductive, re reinvigoration of the ramification to drive a Satsuki forward. That's the third time, and that is going to be primarily tertiary ramification that's gonna develop, right? Because we've waited that long, we've spent a lot of energy, the tree has a much finer output of growth. For this tree, we're gonna be doing a relatively significant cutback to give that play on length. This is the perfect time, right as it's starting to grow, let's do it. And let me just show you, <clears throat> excuse me, wow, had a hard time getting oxygen. Let me just show you, this tip was broken. Uh, probably five or six days ago, and let me just get you in here. Maybe we can even come into a little bit more of a detailed cam. Okay, this tip was broken like five or six days ago, and already you can see, let me put my thumb right there, you can see those green buds. See those very, very small green buds right at the tip of my finger right there? And right on the other side, it's illuminated. Okay, those, that's what happens with Satsuki azalea. They immediately, they love to be pruned. A healthy Satsuki azalea will respond to pruning within a matter of days, at most a week, right? Because they are so vigorous, they're ready to grow stored energy. And that is what we can expect when we prune at this time of year, especially if we're handling stronger shoots. Now, will weaker shoots produce that same kind of production of energy? No, but we could make the argument with Satsuki Azalea, weaker shoots are not water conductive. Let's thin threes and fours down to twos. Let's make those cutbacks. And some of those most vigorous pieces we can prune to shape of the silhouette of the branch right now. And this is what informs how much we go about wiring a Satsuki Azalea. Okay, so now we have that understanding. Early, secondary or primary push of minimal number of branches if we prune heavily. Mid, as growth starts, we get a much more sustainable uh, proliferation of a little bit smaller branching. Post-flowering, we only get tertiary ramification, but in each situation, pruning is necessary on a healthy tree to really encourage that kind of reinvigoration of the branching tips. All right, let's take a look. So immediately, first and foremost, I wanna ask myself, do I have the best base? And I see the right and I see the left roots and I see this central piece and I have complete symmetry in the root base here. Okay, let me turn that to the three quarter cam. Okay, notice this is dead center. That's on the right, that's on the left. The right and the left are on the exact same plane. That is a real problem in design right there, right? And so I'm already looking from where Lonnie's at. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fudge in this direction, okay? Now this also improves, and let's go ahead and go to the wide cam. This is also going to improve the trunk line. If we look here, dead on, boom, and then this central section is very straight right here. But the second that I take it over to here, we go boom, and you see this curve back here. That's a really profound sort of shift of direction, right? Now that's tempting to push the tree back into this piece, but this is your ultimate consistent traditional kaishieta, right? We've got the asymmetry here, we've got this branch here as balanced, but I'm saying, hey, if you've got this kind of root and we have a tree that's less than interesting as a Satsuki azalea, what if we pull in 
We can't cut off. We just talked about it. But what if we pull in Kaishieda and we push out here? We've already kind of rotated that piece so it's towards the front. Instead of two-dimensional, base was two-dimensional. We stopped that. Branching is now no longer two-dimensional. This gives us the opportunity to hop in. Let's go ahead and let's look at reduction of this, okay? Because I think this is maybe where one of the most valuable components of the design renovation of this tree is gonna take place. Now, this is where we start to break down. How far can we go then if we can't remove heavy branching? Hey, listen, Satsuki Azalea loves to be pruned. It loves to be pruned. <clears throat> and out here where we have this woody structure, this is a particularly good location to be making cutbacks that enhance our capacity to compress and compact the tree. And already just with a little bit of cutback, we see, oh yes, this reduction is going to change the aesthetic kind of considerations of this. How far back do we go? Let's continue to push back to the interior, back to a strong transition of a secondary or tertiary branch. Now, immediately, immediately when we look from the wide, the shortening of this has changed a lot about this tree. Now do we have to shorten this? I don't know. Because we also said, listen, if we're gonna pull this Kaishieda in, and we've got this tree that exists strictly in the foreground, pulling out of the foreground to expose the background, and now getting that length play back here and getting that depth in the design, this is another major consideration. We also have this piece that's kind of in our face and blocking our trunk. Let's go ahead and look to take that back. Now when I'm pruning a Satsuki Azalea, I'm pruning back to strong transitions, right? I can't be pruning back to these interior, and Lonnie, if you can kind of blast in here, I wanna set a little bit of a guideline for where we're pruning back to, okay? Because when we look here, notice that I have these big, healthy, multiple shoots pushing from that tip at the, at the end, and I've got flower buds present, okay? Flower buds are a big indication of strength in Satsuki Azalea. I need tips that have flower buds. I need to maintain this strength of branch. If I take this off and I come back in here where I've got no flower buds, I barely have a small growing tip, and I expect that to be able to maintain the draw of water through this branch, that is an absolute mistake. So I've got to be really careful when I'm pruning a piece like this back to be maintaining strength that draws water through that branching system, okay? So when we start to look at that, that forms my boundaries. Now already, as I'm kind of paying attention to this piece that I've reduced here, we start to look at this and I start to see I've got one, I've got two, I've got three, I've got four. I've got four shoots that are originating from this, okay? In the next junction back, I've got that central piece, I've got two weaker pieces here, okay? Now we just said we're not gonna cut back to these weaker pieces. This is a lower branch on the tree. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take off the bottom growing of those two weaker pieces. Now I have one, two. I'm gonna take off the bottom growing of this piece here. Now I've got one, two, three. And this is where we say, hey, do I want this length? Do I want this length on my Kaishieda? Or do I go ahead and take that central stem out and do I lean on these two pieces, which are still strong enough, have flower buds at their tip, which was our criteria, have multiple growth tips that are uh, existing and are much shorter and more compact than that elongated tip. Let me just go ahead and look in terms of how much of reduction and absolutely, I think we go ahead and I think we really try to alter the state of this, okay? Now, when we look at this, we start to see this upward branching. Don't be panicked about this, okay? Because a structural branch is able to pull that down and bring those back to a position where they cover the under guts of that. I'm totally fine with that. And in fact, in Satsuki design, when we're renovating a tree of this nature, we want to be focused on just moving the big structural pieces. We're not going to wire out every single little shoot. Satsuki, over the course of time, do not respond well to that. It's not a sustainable approach to handling Satsuki Azalea, okay? So I'm going to go through and just sort of make the big cuts. Now that you understand how I come back in here and I clarify things, I'm going to make the big cuts I'll bring you back in when it's time to discuss some major design considerations, and then we'll look at making those smaller cuts to really dial in that technique, understand these methodologies, boundaries for pruning at this time to renovate a Satsuki design, and we can move on to the wiring process. Okay, so structural first, give me a little bit of time, let me go through this process and see what we can do to enhance the quality of this tree.
pushing everything back in. Now let me just kind of blast you out here for a second because we've gone around kind of the left side of this tree and notice how much we've pushed in significantly, right? There's, there's no reason to keep this left side super duper long if we're gonna be pushing out here and really maximizing the quality of this defining branch. But it has to be proportional across the tree. Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna watch this azalea's base grow in size. It's going to get much, much larger. And the apex of the tree is one of the areas that needs to be reduced the most to be proportional to this, uh, this trunk size and trunk girth, okay? But as we go around, you'll start to see that proportion being gained. I'm also pushing in on the backside. Now look at how big all of this is how big and run out. And this is where we have to be careful with Satsuki Azalea because we understand basally dominant Satsuki Azalea. Basally dominant means if we come back in and we whack and hack on the apex too hardcore, we can really uh, disempower that apical region. Okay, now I have these water sprouts that are growing out of the trunk. This is a constant necessity, constant necessity fundamental aspect of Satsuki maintenance to take out these vigorous pieces that are growing from the trunk. These are absolute consumers of energy and resource. Let me move it over here. Okay, absolute consumer of energy and resource. Could we use that to make a new structural branch? Absolutely you could. If you wanted one, needed one, branch broke, branch got weak, branch died back, etc. Re-empowering a weakened apex, would we leave that if it had the potential to contribute? Of course. But if not, if we've got good branching, get rid of that stuff. That stuff is, is unnecessary. And the entire base of this tree, now that we've started to get in here, is filled with this type of growth that is uh, originating from. Now, you could say, is that a sign of ill health? No, I would say this is a sign of a, a slight degree of neglect, which the entirety of the tree is sort of showing us. So coming back in and cleaning these pieces off so that they are not the ones that are consuming and generating the energy, right? They're moving water and resources. Tree says, thank you very much. We don't want the tree saying, thank you very much. We want the tree saying, uh, you know, actually, I want to be putting my resources into the upper canopy of this tree, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and not. And you see trees that are incredibly healthy and are incredibly well managed, not even producing these kinds of water sprouts in general. Occasionally they will, but you can train a Satsuki azalea out of that kind of production just based on proper handling, proper health, proper sheen, proper pruning, etc. over the course of time. This one was left to produce some of this growth. This one uh, was allowed to kind of um, slip into a state of disrepair. And so we can come back in here and we can start to correct and rectify that aspect of the cultivation that may have gone slightly awry. Now there's a slight hollow in the backside of this azalea, which ultimately, when we start to look at material value, is not necessarily something that Satsuki azaleas are typically uh, valued for, having deadwood, having hollows. But let's be really honest. In the availability of Satsuki azalea, does a hollow, does deadwood, does something like that completely ruin the tree? No, no, listen. Much like the deciduous model of a smooth, flawless, scarless trunk on a Japanese maple, no wire scars, no pruning sites, uh, no major uh, deadwood or cuts or anything like that. That's an ideal. And Satsukis are created with an ideal. And then there's all of the things that happen that are not, that are not ideal, right? Okay. Doesn't mean it's a worthless tree. Doesn't mean it's not worth the time. Doesn't mean it can't be interesting, valuable. Doesn't mean the flowers aren't beautiful. Doesn't mean the base and the movement from the front isn't amazing. It just means, oh yeah, no, I got a hollow in the back, okay? So let's, let's not become too locked into this notion that every Satsuki Azalea has got to be the per this perfect iteration. We've made this evolution. We've made this evolution in the deciduous model, right? And we can make this evolution from the Satsuki model and it will make a lot more Satsuki Azalea pieces of material available for you to have fun with, explore, and really have the capacity to exercise your design muscle, okay? So getting these water sprouts off of the base of the trunk is helping. I'm gonna go back now to the right side of the tree and the upper apex of the tree, and I'm just gonna pull back some of that structure so that we're able to start to see the reduction of proportions across the board that gives us the framework to really build that interesting design on after we go through that reduction of structural branching.
okay? Now let me pull you out for a second here. I've been coming through the apex. We've reduced it quite a bit. You can see that reduction in the proportion. We've also reduced some of the length here. Now my, my thought process is if we can reduce the width of this and we can elongate a little bit, it's gonna make this pad all the more prominent and all the more interesting. And if we show that pad, with multiple different pieces and kind of really form a more defined, the leaves of Satsuki Azalea allow for proportional design creation. They do tend to have this stylistic, uniform kind of big pad feel. And look at how big this is for this tree. It comes all the way back to here. That's almost half of the tree's circumference that's being covered by that entire pad. If I'm gonna be breaking it up here and I'm gonna to start to go pad, pad, potentially pad, I also want to break it up here so that I don't have that continual run. And that's where I start to look at this and I start to say, okay, do I have a junction where I can start to shorten and come back in? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and take that off and start to bring it in in much the same way we've been reducing this rear portion. Now, reducing the rear portion here means reducing the rear portion here. So as I start to look at this, and this is a little bit more of a sort of secondary pruning. So I don't wanna to go too deep here, but I want to be looking at, are there structural things that I can be correcting in here? Areas of threes, overly elongated pieces, beyond just going through your standard pruning process. And what I'm seeing is it doesn't appear as though there's a tremendous amount of stuff, but I do have kind of another pad here that goes from one side all the, all the way to the other. Look at this around half of this here, awesome. I don't like that. That's not necessarily the best possible utilization of this tree's branching. Let me break it up a little bit. Let me now have a small pad here. Let me have a more minimal. Now we're just here, right? That's proportional methodology to the pruning process to achieve design that has some value beyond, again, just a flower presentation of Satsuki Azalea. And it's a process when we come back to removing and reducing branches from a tree like this where you know it takes time to regrow them, where you know there's a sensitivity to the cutback, okay? Now what you're seeing are just very, very clean uh, parallel cuts, right? Or excuse me, perpendicular cuts. My branch is moving here and I come back in, boom, and I cut there. And I'm gonna leave that nice and clean right there. I will heal that with a little bit of uh, top gin, which is the orange cut paste on any of these bigger pieces. Nothing really coming all the way back to the trunk, okay? I do have a few structural uh, pieces here where I've got a one, a two, and a three in the apex. I can't fix that now, right? Or if I wanted to fix it, I would need to start to implement that change and, ad and adapt and adjust to that over the course of time. I'm not gonna go ahead and try and alter that at this point in time, but maybe next time around, as we build branching on what we've cut back to and redesigned with, maybe that would be the point in time. Okay, but as I can tell, from all of our observations and our prunes that we've made, this is a good time to kind of move into that secondary type of pruning because now we actually have a reduction of the structural pieces. We don't have to worry about wasting our time in establishing uh, you know, structural integrity or structural, structurally sound, sustainable design. Now we can come back into those threes and fours cut those back to twos, and again, we're always leaving strong tips if at all possible. We do not wanna cut strong tips back yet in terms of uh, shortening behind the foyer mass. We will do that when we wire and prune to the silhouette, but I wanna come back into the interior. I wanna take off vertically growing pieces. I wanna be taking off any conglomeration of branching that occurs at any junction where I have good solid structural branching that's holding strong secondary tertiary branching, okay? Because those pieces, that start to combat and grow in the same area are pieces that are going to potentially be sucking the life out of the, the actual branching that we're trying to cultivate health in. And we wanna be very detailed in this. We wanna be cutting any junctions and nods and nodules that have a, nodes and nodules that have a bunch of accumulated weaker branching. We wanna be cutting out knuckles. I'm in here in the interior. I see where several branches have been cut before. And I don't know, Lonnie, can you see that? That might be a little tough. Oh, beautiful, yeah, look at that. Okay, so see these knuckles here where it's been cut? I take that out and now I have a beautiful trifecta. I'm gonna take out that middle one right there. That's a perfect reduction 
on that really small level. Let me show you another one here, okay? Because this is where we start to talk about, again, playing to the strengths of Satsuki Azalea. Notice how small and spindly that is. Small and spindly. Notice the number of ramifiable pieces in the growth tips. These are weaker interior pieces, but if I make the correct selections in this cutback and I'm adjusting the branches above it, this will be empowered to become strong and grow as a result of the pruning process that we're applying to the Satsuki model, okay? So this is what we're doing coming through and really perfecting, working out that, uh, that cleaning up of the branching structure down to those ideal uh, pairs of twos that have the uh, hopefully you know good aggressive strong tips and have the capacity to grow into a contributing branch in the shape and design but if we don't do this periodically if we don't come through and we don't revamp the ramification periodically if we don't come back in and we don't cut periodically then we can really have a problem with Satsuki Azalea over the course of time. This is a mandatory aspect of cultivation. This is also one of those pieces that when we start to redesign Satsuki can really help us refine and reform the shape of the tree. Okay, so as you can see, considerably cleaned up from all of that secondary tertiary, we removed a lot of detritus, we took out the weak stuff, and the balance over the tree. That's really the priority when we start talking Satsuki's basally dominant, neglected, and we go through that structural reinvigoration of, of potential interest in the aesthetics, structural reduction to push that degree of asymmetry. We now see the apex off center. We see the defining branch giving us movement. Now I will say this, in handling this tree, whereas I thought we should be over in here, now that we see the inside, the inverse taper that's happening here is a little bit tough. We see that we have a symmetrical, yeah, let me show you that. There you go, you see that inverse taper right there. We see we have that symmetrical root base. So then I started thinking, well, what if we come over here and we start to pull this in right there, give just a little bit right there, and now we've got that branch giving us even more asymmetry. Either way, it takes us off of 2D, it takes away the symmetrical base, now we're not fighting that uh, inverse taper, I think this might be the move. And it's time, having get, got, achieved that balance, to move to wiring. Now let me just tap into balance one more time to complete the thought. And that is to say, hey listen, if it's a basally dominant tree, and we've got this apex that's showing a slight degree of weakening or lesser degree of density. How do we redistribute energy? In an apically dominant tree, you would hold back the apex. In a basally dominant tree, we hold back these lower branches and we start to even out the foliar density top to bottom. Sparser up in the top, reduce the foliar density of the bottom, and that's what we've done to create a homogeneously even distribution. Bear in mind, okay, I was very conservative in the apical region, as I was doing the pruning, I wasn't thinking even distribution. I was just thinking what branches can and can't be used in the upper portion of the tree versus the lower portion of the tree. And I left more branches in the upper portion of the tree because they had uh, flower buds at the tips, right? And I took more branches off of the lower portion because they were interior weak spindly pieces. And just in that redistribution, structural adjustment, we've struck that balance, okay? So moving into the actual wiring process, our wiring on a Satsuki Azalea is going to focus primarily on structure. And as we said, listen, look at where this branch pad is, look at where this branch pad is, and watch this, boom. That brings that branch all the way down into that. Now, do we bring this out as the tip? Do we shorten that, etc.? That is what we were, are going to deal with once we have officially positioned the thicker branch in the design of our azalea. But again, we don't want to be going through an azalea 
and rewiring uh, all of the fine tips. Okay, that's not the goal. It's it is almost when we talk about broadleaf work in general. Okay, and this is true of broadleaf deciduous. This is true of broadleaf evergreen. When we talk about broadleaf work in general, the less that we wire the finer branches and the more that we're able to focus on the structure, the healthier the tree will be, the more natural it will look. And for an established tree like this, it really does allow us to preserve a lot of the work that has gotten us to this point. Now, there are going to be pieces in this that need more wire. Over the course of, of this design session, there are going to be pieces in this that are going to need a little bit more direction in terms of the smaller branching in the interior, etc. But just for starters and to begin the, the discussion, let's adjust those structural pieces whose positioning will have a very dramatic impact. Okay, Now, I'm using aluminum wire on a Satsuki azalea. I, I do not like using copper. It's a little bit too abrasive. Satsuki is a very, very, very thin soft bark species. Okay, So that aluminum allows us to kind of have the capacity to wire and adjust the shape of the branches without doing damage to those finer pieces, okay? And when I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm not trying to carry my thicker wire out abnormal distances like I might on a conifer to reduce the amount of wire. I'm carrying it out to where it's effective and then I'm cutting it, okay? So that placement there and that, that lowering, okay? And, and with Satsuki, we understand Satsuki are a little bit brittle, okay? So we don't want to be heavily torquing and trying to really manipulate Satsuki azalea, again, as if it's a conifer. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about brittle. We're talking about a little bit gentle. So we just want to have the correct gauge to allow us to move it where it needs to go Make sure that you have the thickness that provides the capacity to relocate those branches. We move it to where it needs to go. We don't go farther and we're not looking. We're not looking with Satsuki Azalea to buy a tree and redesign it, reposition everything, wire everything, etc. We are working with the shape that we have in the piece of material. And this is something that you're just going to have to accept that working with that character Right? And again, it's like Peter Warren talking about the flower tower where he said, look, it's a flower tower. We could do all of these things, but that's not really, you know, you're not really going to be able to make this something that it's not because you cannot redesign, you cannot relocate, and you cannot wire everything on a Satsuki Azalea. Okay? So when I come out here to these tips, maintaining orientation, and I know, again, a little bit brittle, so I want to be careful. Okay, I roll with the wire when I bend. I'm not trying to adjust too much of this piece, okay, and I'm just closing down those gaps, closing down those holes, occupying those places with good, solid, healthy branching. I see I missed a few pieces in here, so let me just go ahead and fix that. Cleanly prune, boom, and this is what wiring after the pruning process does, is it allows you to go ahead and check your work. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get up in here. Okay, but we start to reform. We start to reform, we start to reframe that entire layout. Okay, and now, now, now we have the capacity when we sort of reconstitute that layout. Now we have the capacity. Notice that I have this piece sitting out outside of the silhouette here, okay, kind of high, high up in the canopy of the tree. I'm going to take that out because I've relocated this. Notice at the tip here, I have these three strong pieces. I'm going to take out that longest one now because it's not exactly in a position where it's going to contribute, okay? I've got a little bit of a weaker piece here. I'm going to take that one out. I've got a little bit of a con conglomeration there. I'm going to take that out. I've got a piece hanging down off the bottom here. I'm going to take that out. This is how we handle Satsuki Azalea once we have put the branch in the position where it has the capacity to contribute, okay? Now, I, I, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, gosh, do I wanna drop that down? This is the booze, you gotta be real careful here, okay? This is the booze that you're fed once you start wiring Satsuki Azalea, okay? Because we start to say, gosh, I wired this and that looks so good, now I can wire this and it's gonna look even better. I think we have to be discriminating. Now, I will say an abrupt transition like we have here, bringing that down, spreading the foliage out a little bit, does it help with the distribution? It does. I can, I can validate and I can justify that as a reasonable application of wire. That'll be the, the third piece of wire. First was the structural, second was the secondary. Do one more secondary piece, and I'm done with this branch. That's all I want to be doing. I don't want to be wiring this any more than that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, 
kind of weave this through these finer branches. And again, that the brittleness of the finer branching is really something to behold in a satsuki. Super, super careful and delicate with that application of wire through those finer branches. Okay, making sure I have good contact. I don't want loose wire. People say, oh, do you need to, do you need to wire Satsuki azaleas? Do you need to uh, leave more spaces? No, no, spaces don't allow wire to function. Okay, what we need to do is we need to use our offhand uh, in as informed and educated of a capacity as we possibly can. That's the move, right? The offhand supporting, the offhand providing the capacity for that wire to be applied with contact, having all of that function inside of it. And now look at that, okay? I can take a few of these bottom leaves off of these stronger outer areas to really clean it up. Okay, and that feels really nice to me. Look at that, really beautiful. Kaishieda, let's go ahead and look from the new front. Kaishieda not blocking the, the, the trunk, right? We talked about maybe this needs to be pulled back just a little bit. Let me just pull back on this aggressive piece right there, okay? Just a little pull back. There's my front covering up a little bit of that inverse swelling here, showing that asymmetry. Notice that over here, we get depth in the root system here, and now we see that shoulder there. I love this, okay? I love this. Now, is this a fantastic world-class Satsuki Azalea? No. Is this a, a, a tree that is going to, you know, win any shows? No, no, no. This is an azalea that is accessible. This is an azalea that has flaws. But this is an azalea that any one of us could go to, you know, an advanced bonsai facility or potentially find in somebody's collection that they might not know what to do with or want or have access to at a club, auction, raffle, etc., and be empowered now with this knowledge to be able to take it, improve it, uh, enhance the health of it, and cultivate it on as a really lovely tree. That's what this is, okay? That's what this piece is. This is an opportunity just to be able to work with Satsuki Azalea uh, on a more confident and comfortable level when it comes to pruning and wiring and reinvigorating the design, okay? And, 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 I, and I recognize that, and that's okay. We don't always need to be striving for world class. World class isn't, isn't the criteria for whether a tree is worth the squeeze to, to put in the time uh, and effort to make, make beautiful, right? This has merits, it has a good base, it's gonna have beautiful flowers. I, I don't know what variety this is, it's a larger leaf variety. Um, looks a lot like uh, a, a large number of other Saskia azaleas that I've seen, you know? Um, we'll know once it flowers what variety it is though, and that's when we can really lock in and identify. Okay, if it was a, if we did know the variety, would that impact or change the way that we handled this work? Um, not necessarily. It, there might be some nuances that we would need to take into consideration if it were a smaller leaf variety, which smaller leaf varieties typically tend to be slightly less durable, right? Smaller leaf varieties typically tend to be more hybridized, and we understand that those highly hybridized um, varieties do tend to be a little bit weaker. I mean, let's just be honest. You know, when we start to talk about the more crossbred and the more uh, distant that varieties get from the parent genetic, of a pure strain Satsuki, the more sensitive and the more delicate they, they become, okay? So from that perspective, uh, if we did have a small leaf variety or we did have some abnormal characteristics that were making themselves known, we may really want to highly and strongly consider that, okay? Now, as I'm looking here, thinking about this sort of orientation changing, I'm able to make further decisions on the length of some of these stronger shoots in this region. Now here again, I really want separation in these pads. I'm gonna go ahead, I've got four branches here. One, two, three, four. I wanna be able to control these to really drop these down. And then that's going to empower me to not use nearly as much wire over in this other portion. And I'm gonna say that the defining branch is always, when we start to reform a tree, is always gonna be the one that takes the most consideration. We started with the Kaishieda. That might have been you know, a little bit uh, out, of, uh, out of context compared to what we usually do, but definitely moving to the defining branch and allowing us to set that uh, style and standard of handling always gives us a guidepost for how we work through the other branches, okay? So coming up through here, my goal with the uh, regaining of the proportion through the pruning, through the structural adjustment, is that we can certainly regain uh, some of that proportion through adding space and then we can talk about 
a little bit of the pruning process with some of these stronger tips to be able to potentially shorten those that grow outside of the silhouette. And that's ultimately, at this point in time, a really good place to kind of stop the conversation with Satsuki Azalea and just allow the tree to recover, allow it to push out growth, allow it to respond with that stored energy on the interior and the places that are now uh, accessible to sunlight, accessible to some of the resources that have been allocated to those stronger areas, okay? So let me work through this defining branch. And once I'm through the defining branch and we understand stylistically, I can just blast off and going ahead and taking that and continu continuing to universally uh, contribute to the rest of the tree's form and shape, okay? So here's a, a great example of this moment right here, okay? We're looking at a very, very strong region of the tree. We've got these big, huge pieces sticking up, okay? Now I can use my wire to just kind of play and adjust these areas right here at the tip. And I'm just gonna give myself the ability to divide these finer pieces here, okay? And in that ability, I can kind of flirt this down and over here. Now what I can do then is instead of leaving two at this end, I've got this nice, beautiful, smaller, weaker piece. Now, you say, don't cut back to weaker pieces on Satsuki's yeah. Don't cut back to weaker pieces in weaker areas and stronger areas, which this is maybe the strongest area on the tree. Feel free to cut back to just one of those tips, take off bottom leaves, and even if you go ahead and you shed the tip of that, not a big deal, I can take that off and it'll come back, probably the broken piece would have come back anyways. And that helps me in that stronger area with that uh, abnormal orientation to kind of readjust the positioning of those branches to not necessitate wire uh, and to fit inside of the silhouette, okay? Now we can come back and there are some elongated shoots on the backside that when I'm dealing with them from the wiring process, we'll blast back out and show you how those can be pruned to offer the opportunity to push buds back on the interior. But for these pieces down here, we have a relatively good proportional distribution of length to be able to contribute positively to the shape uh, of this tree as, as it stands and just adjust the number of tips that exist on the end. And that's what we chose to do with that last piece. Okay, so I'm gonna fold these down and in, just kind of work these into the current shape and silhouette. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna expand these here. Yep, feels good. Let's see what we got here. Good. Can we get that down? Oh yeah. Let's go ahead and go here. Okay, I've got this area of three. I'm gonna take out that overly long one. Mm. Love it. I'm gonna come between these, give myself a little bit of distance here. Okay, nice and easy on these tips. Great, great. Okay, and now I can come back, I can adjust some of these dense areas, I can adjust this length here. Okay, and if I really wanted to, if I really had one of these shoots that was significantly outside of the proportion, for example, these upper ones here, watch how I handle these. I'm gonna cut them to the desired length, boom, okay? Notice how I left that. Notice how I left the fork. That absolutely will produce buds that will be much more in proportion to the size of this pad and how we're reframing this pad in the design of this piece just by cutting that back. Now, we don't wanna do that across the tree. We wanna save foliage at this point in time, being in the mid-spring, right? If we were talking about a tree that was revved up with strength, super healthy, and we wanted to cut it back uh, and, and get more aggressive, vigorous shoots, we would prepare the tree for that. We could do that earlier in the spring. At this point, I don't wanna cut all these back. I wanna leave foliage. I wanna drive moisture movement and water movement through this tree. But we can make those cuts in very strong areas, and they will produce a lot of buds and beautiful ramific ramification that's usable for us, okay? Did we sacrifice flowering? We did. Is that okay? Absolutely. Build the tree before you enjoy the flowers. That's always the notion, okay? So I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna work through the shape and the wiring of these pieces and let me show you what we've got in there. There's your defining branch, here's your caixieta, okay? And that's about the extent of the definition that I'm looking for in terms of the wiring process here, okay? And I'm rotating that, you can see. That's, that's what I want. 
okay? I don't want to be more defined than that. It's too much for a Satsuki Azalea, okay? We're gonna go through the wiring process. I'll zoom out and show you a few pruning techniques, but let's see if we can wrap this up and make this really beautiful to begin the spring season of growth. Okay, so coming to the back of this tree, let's just sort of take a, a, a general progress report of where we're at. We've got our Kaishieta handled here. There's our front. You can see a little bit more of that pad formation and breaking up of that defining branch. We're gonna come around. You see the narrowing of that. We've got these central pieces finished on this uh, right side of the tree. I have yet to address the left side, but I am working my way up. And it happens fast, right? When we wire in this fashion to kind of reset the system. Now, as we get to the back, I really want to, and let me just show you direct back right there in terms of depth. I want to pull this in. Satsuki azalea are allowed to grow out the back and become big and robust. And you can even see how big these upper branches are. Look at the length of the upper branches. We haven't addressed those, but those are gonna to have to be shortened too. So this is where I'm coming back into these exceptionally vigorous, right? And here would be a perfect uh, you know, iteration of a, of a vigorous branch. Let me just rotate that slightly. Okay, you see that. I've got that mature tip. I've got that long, fleshy, beautiful new growth of the stem. That's what's happening down here when we're looking into this lower region. And you see, I'm cutting that back to a point where we, and let me just show you, I'm cutting that back to a point where there is no longer leaf mass on that piece. That is just a twig. And that will give me that short inner node, really nice tight growth as a response. Lower down, stronger area out on the tip, had an abundant amount of foliar mass, that pruning process gives me a new flush of growth right now in the spring season, okay? Again, up in the apex, if I see weakening areas that don't have that flower bud present, I can't cut back like that and expect another flush to occur. But in those areas where I have that strength, I can. And it allows me to not have to remove the whole branch as if it were a conifer, it allows me to go ahead and cut back a strong, significant structural branch. This is a major bifurcation right here, right? Go ahead and bring me in tight, Josh. Major bifurcation here where I've got this piece and this piece. I don't wanna cut one of those off, but I've got a little spindly piece here. Notice that stub right there. I just went ahead and cut back this overly elongated piece that's sitting underneath the branch above it, and it's gonna proliferate with nice, tight, compact growth that preserves the secondary bifurcation and the presence of the tertiary pieces. Lovely to add that ramification and have that kind of freedom. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue working up with a notion that I don't want to be wiring all of these pieces that have been allowed to grow down. I'm gonna be wiring out the outer silhouette of the branches and I'm gonna be pruning the stronger pieces on the top to get them to flush again with a much tighter, more robust pad formation. I will continue with the wiring process. All right, a very dramatic 
I would say a very, very dramatic reduction of a Satsuki Azalea. You can see the space, you can see the regaining of the proportions, you can see how we really, you know, when we pushed in here in the beginning, it was a, it looked like we had completely disrupted the entire capacity for this tree to have a really valuable design. Yet now that we're at the tail end and you see the regaining of proportion, you see the defining branch pushing out to the right, you see the apex reconfigured. And let's just be very clear about the apex. Okay, We have good branching in the apex, but by dropping all of the other pieces throughout the, the composition and changing that pad formation, the apex, and you can particularly see it there, just needs to fill in. And it will fill in very rapidly as it fills in, we'll be pruning more and more aggressively with the expansion of that apical region and we will very quickly fill that apical region out in terms of the Satsuki azalea. But this is, you know, when we do the initial design of a broadleaf deciduous tree, you look at it and you say, yeah, it doesn't look that good, right? When we do the initial design of a broadleaf evergreen tree, it's even harder because you have these patches of foliage, these bare branches, and you're like, that looks terrible until it starts to grow until it starts to fill in. And a Satsuki azalea is no different, right? We kept almost every single branch in the upper apical region of the tree in order to get an apex this dense. And yet you see, once everything is kind of laid down and we redistribute that apex, we compress it, we build it out, it has some holes that need to be filled in. Now, six weeks from now, what will this look like? I think we circle back and take uh, uh, an observation of it. How do we handle it after flowering? I think this is what we need to address. Let's track the progress of this Satsuki azalea so that we understand the implications of the pruning that we did, the reduction, the selective threes and fours down to twos, the pruning of these very strong tips to reduce their height and create the space in the branching, right? These are the things, and notice here, you know, like these are the pieces where we prune those back to bare wood and we're saying, what is gonna happen? That seems crazy, there's no way, especially when this is in leaf, is that gonna, no. It all balances itself out in a Satsuki azalea as a shrub basally dominant. It is geared to respond to this kind of activity. We've bre bre I think we've breathed a lot of new life into this piece, but we now have to sit back and allow the tree to evolve, execute the design that we've conceptualized, fill in, and we will track the progress as this tree continues to grow, expand, evolve, and develop, all right? Satsuki Azalea design, pruning, cleaning, spring season, tis the moment that we can get away with a lot on this wonderful species and understanding it, taking a really high level of intentional design to the approach of handling Azalea, the world is your finger, at your fingertips as far as what you can accomplish with this beautiful species. Okay, hope you guys got it. Look forward to seeing that Azalea game getting stronger. We'll be building on this tree over the course of this year. Love you guys. Mm -hmm.